We're going to move on to our last presentation um, of the day, um, who, which is going to be um, from Louise um, from the Impact Initiative uh, and Hilmi, who works for Interaction. Um, and they're going to be discussing uh, using the settlement approach um, in out of camp CCCM responses. So, Louise, I see you've already started sharing your screen. So, I will hand over to you. Hi, everybody. Um, we're going to start with Hilmi. Uh, so I'm just going to hand it over to him right away and I'll be back with you in, in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, Louis, I don't see the slide. It says started. Share. Okay. Thank you. Um, can everybody share? Okay. So uh, thanks uh, for CCCM. I know it's a uh, last uh, presentation of the day. Uh, hopefully you have some energy. Thanks for saving the best for the last. Um, this, uh, so many of you may have already uh, heard about the settlements approach. Uh, we won't go into detail, but uh, Luis will uh, go into details about how it connect to CCCM uh, coordination and uh, management. Now, uh, uh, what is settlements approach? So we uh, started looking at this in nine, uh, 2017, uh, CRS uh, interaction and impact uh, with the support of uh, USAID uh, BHA uh, based in uh, global shelter cluster. But we were from the very start uh, wanted to reach out to every other cluster and sector humanitarians as well as development actors. So this is not, uh, you know, from the start to understand, it's not about shelter or settlement. Uh, it is more than that. So uh, over four years, we had, uh, next slide please, uh, had multiple uh, working group meetings. Uh, we had over 140 uh, uh, working group participants from 50 organizations. We have done uh, analysis of over 30 case studies uh, conduct, uh, implemented in multiple cities, uh, diverse contexts of uh, uh, you know, um, disasters, crisis, conflicts, and other things. Um, so this year, we did uh, release this uh, uh, guidance note. Um, and uh, I, I would like to thank multiple CCCM colleagues uh, who were part of this uh, uh, authorship, uh, consultations, uh, multiple documents we uh, use from CCCM specifically to incorporate uh, the best practices. Next one, please. So uh, in, uh, I won't go into too much detail. Uh, in, in essence, the settlements approach is a framework for aid agencies to plan, deliver more efficient, targeted and localized multi-sectoral interventions. Um, and uh, we also wanted to make a, a simplified version of how it can be applied in multiple contexts. So it defines uh, four basic concepts uh, or principles uh, uh, defining a geographical area with high needs, uh, considering the whole population, work multi-sectorally and, and working with multiple stakeholders. So uh, next one, please. Okay, uh, Luis, take it away. Yep, so thanks, Hilmi, for this introduction. As Hilmi said, so the Selman's approach is a concept we've been working on over the past few years, and we really wanted to make it something that can be endorsed by any um, cluster, any sector. It's really about working better together at the local level to address the multi sector needs of target populations in the best and most context sensitive possible way. So how does it connect to what you do in the CCCM sector? Well, first of all, it's, it's particularly relevant um, to intervene in out of camp displacement context. And as we know, the vast majority of um, displaced populations don't reside in formalized camps rather stay um, in informal camps or even with uh, house communities. And it's even more true in cities and urban contexts. 
uh, in these cities, they tend to be um, scattered across uh, informal sites, across uh, neighborhoods that are already pretty vulnerable and exposed to hazards and disconnected from basic services, networks, etc. So for CCCM practitioners who want to intervene in uh, out of camp displacement contexts in cities, it can be very hard to locate displaced people in the first place. And it's also very hard to service them uh, in a context where in first resort, IDPs and refugees um, utilize services that are provided by the host community um, and by urban systems. So in this case, um, one needs to care about not creating parallel channels of service delivery, which will risk disempowering um, local service providers, but also decision makers, and also distorts local markets and exacerbate tensions with um, house community. There's a bunch of literature on the topic and I'm sure we're all on the same page. So what does the settlement approach have to do with that? Well, it provides a set of tools that we hope are easy to use and ready to use for CCCM practitioners among others to one, uh, locate the target populations, understand in a given area, be it a city or a region, where are the areas that host a bigger number of, of uh, IDPs and refugees. Then it's also a tool to assess their needs, but not only the needs of local of target populations, also understand the impact of the displacement influx, um, the impact that it has on host populations and uh, networks of basic services. And when the assessment is done and the consensus around the needs and priorities is shared, it also provides a set of tools or at least a framework uh, for humanitarian actors to deliver multi-sector interventions at different scales. And when we say at different scales, it's starting from an understanding that um, a problem that er arises at the very local level of, for example, a, a neighborhood uh, may come from another scale, these of a district or region. So the Selman's approach uh, guides you through that complexity so humanitarian actors who are busy doing great work in the field are, have better access um, to and connections with other actors, either from other sectors or from local authorities, experts and development partners. Yeah, and the partnership is also quite key. Um, it sets different scenarios to help humanitarian actors um, develop partnerships that, are, that, that can be as sustainable as possible with local authorities and development partners and CSOs as well. Uh, so interventions targeting displaced people can be uh, handed over to local authorities um, in the aftermath of the intervention. Um, this guidance, so we're always uh, making reference to the guidance note that's, uh, it's been a key milestone for us um, last year. Uh, as Hilmi said, it was co-authored with, um, quite a few experts coming from very many different sectors, but of quite a few of them came from CCCM. So we made sure that whatever was in this guidance that was going to be applied across, across different sectors would put great emphasis on out of camp displacement context where CCCM actors uh, are increasingly intervening. So we're making reference to a few key documents such as the UNDOC, which dates back from uh, 2014, but which is still pretty, pretty relevant. Um, so how to use that will probably uh, give you a chance to read it and see how uh, that can be useful in your, own, um, in your own work, but it's really an encouragement for CCCM actors and others to invest um, more time, more resources, be it time, HR capacity, a bit of policy and relationship building with uh, actors who are not traditionally engaging uh, or leading humanitarian responses um, for the benefit of displaced people for sure, but also for the benefit of host communities, hosting them of service providers who are at the front line of meeting their, their basic needs. So this is it, a final, uh, a final graph maybe to end this uh, 
this note on the CCCM applications of the summons approach, we, we couldn't agree more that uh, applying the summons approach uh, usually takes more time than um, more of the standardized way we do things because uh, you do need to build a lot of relationships uh, from, the, uh, from the outset. Uh, you need to invest a bit more resources in assessments and multi-sector interventions, et cetera. It's not necessary everywhere though. Um, Kintex where the summons approach really adds value to uh, humanitarian interventions is really where displacement occurs in areas that are already inhabited by vulnerable house communities. So what appears in, in orange, if you like, um, and as well as in purple. So whenever you're in a situation where um, the displacement occurs outside of sites and that outside of formal camps, whether um, displaced people are hosted by host communities or non-hosted, this um, would make a settlement's approach assessment and intervention even more relevant. It's obviously less the case when you're intervening in a formal camp where there's limited interaction with the spatial uh, elements of the city with other um, house communities in, in existing neighborhoods. And sometimes I've got a little bit of a mix. So it's really up to people operating in the field to strike the right balance, but making sure the right local people are engaged in the, in, in the intervention decision making, building on the key principles of, of the Selman's approach. Obviously it's a bit quick. We're happy to tell you more about it. We're happy to have bilateral chats with any one of you who are interested in knowing more. So don't hesitate to reach out later on. I'll just close uh, by saying a few words about who, who we are, you already know uh, somehow, but what we wanna do next. So our working group, which is housed under the Global Shelter Cluster, uh, really aims in the coming two years um, at running activities on three fronts. Uh, train, research, and promote. So training, because uh, there's a lot of consensus around the fact that a settlement approach can be useful in a number of fields, um, but there isn't sufficient know-how at various levels, uh, and we really want to provide that capacity to those who will to invest a bit more. So we'll be developing trainings for practitioners in the, in the next few months, and obviously, if you're interested, you'll be able to, to benefit um, either as um, you know, trainee or even if you want to contribute your own expertise in, in their making. The second point, researching. Um, we all have quite a lot to learn from each other all the time, obviously, and there isn't, uh, there's never enough evidence about what works and what works less and how things that haven't worked ideally could be improved. So we're also uh, engaged in a number of research um, activities uh, that will include a review of positive area-based or settlement-based CCCM programs. And again, if you have experiences that you wanna share, uh, we're very happy to, to build from your experience. And the, the third pillar promotes, so things like what we do today, uh, making sure that this knowledge is available to um, the biggest possible numbers beyond the usual shelter and settlement um, audience, also taking it to the next policy level. So hopefully you're gonna see us in a number of platforms and forums, and we're gonna try and contribute to advocate for more multi-sectoral and localized approaches. And what do we do that for? Well, we do that because we believe that the more uptake there is around the summons approach, uh, the more relevant interventions are gonna be at the local level and the more commitment uh, we're gonna see at the policy level from key donors and UN agencies to help us do that more and better in the field. So that's it. A few, if you want to take a look at our luck frame, this is a more detailed overview of the activities we're um, committing to in the next few years. But again, there is uh, quite a lot of space for anyone to join and contribute. And we're always keen to expanding our member base beyond shelter and salmon practitioners, especially if you're intervening in out of camp displacement contacts where 
uh, willing to build from your expertise as well. So welcome to join. And thanks a lot for waiting that long for our presentation. Um, that was a, an honor to contribute. Thank you very much. And uh, I think, you know, thank you for, for taking the last lot of the day. It seems like we still have quite a lot of interest, even though the whole day has spanned various time zones um, across the globe. So I think that was a good last presentation for the day because I think it speaks to a lot of the other presentations um, and examples that were that were given today. Um, off the top of my head, the Yemen area-based approach. I don't know if you were able to catch that um, presentation um, earlier on the day by Myrno and Kat and Petra. I think there's certainly a lot of complementarity there, and I think those you know, your two approaches work uh, quite well together. I also understand in the CCM uh, case studies, um, uh, there's one chapter that is going to have a uh, sort of urban displacement um, case studies in it. And I see that Jorn um, has shared in the chat um, a resource library from urbancrises.org. So thank you very much uh, for that, Jorn. Um, I'm going to hand over to Juan now to sort of like give some closing um, remarks. Um, <clears throat> for the day. Um, and I will also share now the uh, the YouTube link to the CCCM playlist for as a reward for everyone who uh, who made it to the end of the day. It's no yeah. longer going to be a secret. Um, over <laughs> to you. <Juan. laughs> I think we're really going to have to be careful about uh, what we can report to donors as um, outcome of such meetings. Um, though I think they would appreciate our playlist um, very much so. Um, I want to thank everyone so much on being here and participating and engaging and presenting. Um, I think there's been some um, sessions that I think really stick with us uh, in the team who's been organizing this. Um, it was so great to open the day with the um, CCCM case studies uh, that we've been working on. Um, and, you know, I think it's also great from our side to hear how many times pe different people from different sectors or from CGCM people in different contexts mention the minimum standards for camp management. Um, I think, I hope that you're gonna join us for the launch of that standards on the online platform uh, on 15th of June. Um, and uh, sorry, 15th of July, <laughs> rather. <laughs> Let's not go back in time. I think we don't wanna rerun that. Um, I think Bruce was mentioning, it's also really good to hear, um, I think different perspective from different sectors and actors, um, even around the same topics, you know, whether we call it um, area-based approach in CCCM or settlement approach in the shelter sector, you know, and I think it's, but I think like, and I think the highlight for me has been how much we talk about engaging with people and working. And I think we hear so much from the experience. And I think this is what we really capture um, in our global team and global meetings is to try and see, you know, I think we're very much ground up in, in that approach and like looking at the direct experience that people are sharing and, and where we can provide support to your operations and, and what you're working on. Um, I think uh, we also had some, uh, I think we had, Merno, I see that you're still here. Um, again, thank you so much for that great presentation um, on the, from Yemen, um, also on area-based approach. Um, we had, I think for those of you who joined us um, earlier today, we had Daniel talking about the the, um, the complaint feedback mechanism and, and the way of capturing um, information and actually take action to that, you know, that changes the way in which we operate. And I think it was great to see again um, from, oh my God, and now I've forgotten her name. I'm so sorry, from the community um, perception tool um, from- uh, Raisa Azalina. Raisa, yeah. And, and I think that's just like, you know, like it's such a great conglomeration of, of different things. And I really feel like, I mean, this is the second year that we have our meetings online and I'm just super excited and super proud on like how many of our um, national and local colleagues we have um, presenting their work um, in, in our, on our like global platform. And I think that's been such 
like a massive silver lining for um, for having to have these meetings online. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you know it would be great to meet, see, talk like, directly face to face with at least some of you um, over the coming months and the coming years. Um, and, and I think it'd be great to see if we can have also more regional um, level discussions um, go, and like going forward. Thank you so much, Bruce, for organizing and, and hosting this event. Um, if Elisa is still here, thank you so much for being the DJ always. Um, and, and massive um, congratulations for all of you for staying with us, for presenting. Um, take care. Um, and have a good evening and week going forward. <laughs>